drip, 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 drip. That's not the sound of a leaky faucet. That's the sound of a leaked album. Drip, drip. Machine Head's Unto the Locust, to be exact. This is an album that's going to be released later on this month, September the 27th, here in the United States. And I was surprised. Over the past 24 hours, I've gotten a lot of requests for this album to be covered, and it was one that I was going to cover anyways. Uh, however, what was surprising was the way in which it was presented. Some people were just asking flat out for the album to be reviewed, while other people were already offering their opinion on the leak. And I was surprised because a couple people were very disappointed. And it made me very apprehensive. It made me worry about listening to this disc, because typically, whenever you guys are apprehensive or show disdain towards something, you guys are really right. Morbid Angel is probably a very good example of that, and uh, even though I had covered it before you guys had mentioned it to me after the fact, Queensryche was another one. But uh, with Machine Head, especially after hearing the song Locust, both live and on YouTube and everything like that, I figured, you know... What could they have done on the other tracks on this album that was just so poor? First thing I'll tell you is that it's a seven-track affair, and you're thinking, seven tracks? Holy shit. Is this going to resemble the Blackening? Is it going to be just like the Blackening in the fact that these are lengthy song lengths? Are we going to have ten-minute long songs? Well, no, not quite. It's not going to be that as long. Is it going to share the same Blackening brutality? Is it going to have the same epic feel to the Blackening? I mean, the Blackening, the Blackening, the Blackening. Shut up! Unto the Locust is not the Blackening. That's one thing that we need to get out of the way right now. This is the follow-up to The Blackening, and follow-ups are very difficult sometimes for fans to accept and for bands to complete, mainly because there's a lot of media hype, there was a lot of praise for The Blackening whenever it was released. It was on many lists, including one of the best albums of the decade of the 2000s, so it's definitely a struggle to try to replicate an album such as that and exceed the expectations that are placed in front of them by the fans and by the media uh, to produce something that's equal, if not greater in magnitude. In fact, fans want something even greater because we want it all. These are seven tracks that each have a very individualistic feel to them, and that's something that Machine Head is very known for. However, it is something that The Blackening was very known for. However, this particular album kind of goes about that in a much different way. There are aspects and particulates to, this song, uh, to these songs that you are going to encourage and really require multiple listens in order for you to fully get the breadth of what Rob Flynn and the boys were intending with each individual track. And that's a very good aspect of this because the replay value on Unto the Locust will be very high for this reason. And it's also going to be high because I think that this is an album that will have a certain degree of low-level controversy to it only because a lot of people may feel it didn't quite measure up to the album that preceded it. Now let me give you a couple of reasons why some people may be a little disenfranchised by this album or turned off at first. Very first reason is that there's multi-layer vocals on some of these songs. Now what I mean by that is instead of it just being a solo uh, vocal track that you hear from Rob Flynn, you're, just, you're hearing actually an amalgamation of various vocal tracks which creates a bit of a vocal dynamacy, also creates a subtle harmony to it, and at times, it gives it a very polished and refined feel. Now, whenever you hear everything in a very polished and refined way, instead of it sounding with that, uh, with that trip, uh, traditional, very dark and, you know, kind of brutal side to it, that, that sort of really harsh vocal range and style to it, it's going to come off as a little bit more clean and a little bit more accessible. And that word accessible scares a lot of people. It's something that not a lot of people want to hear, especially whenever it comes to a band such as Machine Head. I can understand that. Don't worry about that. Do not worry about that. Just because the vocals may sound a little bit more accessible due to this little, I guess, pampering of the style, you know, making it sound a little bit more, you know, clean as opposed to extremely harsh does not make it bad. For example, I cite Opeth whenever I think of something like that. You know, in some songs, this is just the natural flow of the song. This is where the song needs to go. Uh, in an Opeth song, it's a very, very brutal experience until you reach a certain degree, and then there's only two places where it can go. It can maintain that brutality, or it can go into a softer, more melodic state. More often than not, Opeth opts to go with option number two. Machine Head is going down into this book, which is a book that they actually went down into on the Blackening as well. So if anything, there's more of a similarity there than a difference. The only difference is, is that it sounds a little bit more polished. 
Now, secondly, something else that may really turn people off. They may complain a little bit about the riffage, which they should not. Because, once again, these are all riffs that are very expertly sculpted. The soloing on this, on this record may not be quite as epic, and the songwriting may not seem quite as, you know, touching, as legendary. You know, it may not be, you know... As same the, the same as uh, to the first track off of The Blackening, which many people will cite as just incredible. However, each individual song has little droves and aspects to it that are going to require multiple listens and are going to encourage a lot of obsession over because it has those little tweaks and those little you know places where you really want to sit down, you really want to listen, and you want to digest each and every note of it because each and every note of it does seem to really represent something very special or different. So that's something that's also very cool about this. There is a lot of just difference to this, and it's difference in a good way. They didn't shift the formula all that much, but it's difference in a good way. They didn't shift the formula all that much, but they encouraged a little bit more of an experimentation, an expansion of what they had done on the Blackening, and that expansion is... One part of risk, because some people may not particularly care for the expansion which is offered. However, I believe that this expansion is a key and quality part to musical growth, and it's something that Machine Head did show on this record, Unto the Locust. It's very, very strange to say that an album does not live up to its predecessor, but still shows musical growth. That's something that Unto the Locust does do. It shows musical growth, it shows that the band is continuing to shift its it sound just enough where each individual album maintains that individualism. So that's something that's also fantastic. Thirdly and finally, the most keynote argument that I know that I'm going to hear from people that and I know that people are going to really make over the course of the next couple of months is that it's not the blackening. Of course it's not the blackening. It's unto the locust. Get a grip, guys. These are seven tracks that are sculpted very meticulously. These are, song, or these are songs that are written with a certain degree of passion, a certain degree of respect, and a certain degree of just raw intensity that you saw with The Blackening, but that you also saw with The More Things Change, Burn My Eyes, and everything else. This is not a band that has shifted so, uh, so stylistically that it resembles something like The Burning Red. We have not gone to those lengths, folks. This is something where it's just not quite on par to what fans expected because the Blackening was such a high pedestal in order to replicate or exceed. For what this album is worth, it is a strong piece of art, and this is something that should be respected as such. <clears throat> the music on this album, the seven tracks, are still sculpted with that same care and with that same love, that same raw intensity that you heard on The Blackening, but these are just different musical ideas. Are you necessarily going to have that same epic feel that The Blackening was able to share with you? Probably not. And that's something that, honestly, I don't know if they'll ever be able to replicate again. There are some bands that are able to make multiple legendary albums, and then there are others that it all seems to happen at once. And the funny thing is, is that with Machine Head... I consider this to be their second real great plateau run where they're writing really good music. The first of which being right at the beginning of their career with Burn My Eyes and The More Things Change. And this is now the second album of a great two album run with The Blackening and now onto The Locust. I really enjoyed this record. I really did. And I think that this is one that's going to be one of those subtle sleepers that whenever it first comes out, a lot of Machine Head fans are going to love it. But those who maybe are teetering a little bit I think you guys are going to come around because this has multiple listens written all over it. And if you do give this album that opportunity, I think that its subtle secrets will reveal themselves to you. And you'll begin to understand why exactly this album either didn't touch you in the same way as The Blackening or why it touches you in the same format, but just in a different way. 8.5 out of 10. I have a feeling this is an album that we will see again. This is not going to be an album that's going to be an album of the year. Don't get me wrong. However, this is an album full of enough strong material that for it to not be present on the list, it would be a surprise. Cover Killer Nation saying that this is an album that is definitely worthy of your pre-order. It's also an album that is worthy of your purchase whenever it's released on the 27th of September 
here in 2011. And once again, September has just been a fantastic month already. And there's still more to go. Stay tuned for the next Cover Killer Nation review. Like the Facebook page. Subscribe to the channel. All that happy horse shit. Later.